Welcome to the Dr. Me First podcast with me, your colleague in medicine and coach in life, Dr. Erin Wiseman. Hey, 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 welcome back to another episode of Dr. Me First. It's me, your super sassy host, Dr. Erin Wiseman, and I'm helping female physicians move from a life of burnout, from brokenness and despair into one that is joy-filled, sustainable, and one that you truly, truly love. So are you ready for some encouragement and some fun? Maybe a little inspiration and hope infused into your life? I know sometimes I don't need just a sprinkling. I need like a mainline, pick line, infusion of all of those. And I hope that this is what this podcast is for you. So today is a solo cast with me. I'm talking about what Dr. Me First actually means to me. So if you're wondering where the name came from, I actually, when I was going through burnout, I wanted a guide. I wanted a protocol. I wanted like something to show me how to get from where I was, which was the middle of the suck, back into a life that felt amazing, that felt light, that felt full of full of light and full of joy. And so what I did as part of a project is I sat down and I wrote this book, which turned out to be a workbook, which is how fun. I mean, who doesn't love to get the crayons, color pencils, markers out, whatever, and fill in some pages. But anyway, so this project started out as a small like ebook. It was going to be like five to ten pages, you know, just to get something out into the world on what I thought physicians needed to work through burnout and to go into a career that they thrive in and a life that they loved. And the more I kept writing, the longer it got and the longer it got and the longer it got. And the program that I was working in said I no longer had any memory left to keep saving PDF files, so I had to cut it off. But it was just a great project that helped me, one, get all of my ideas out on paper. Everything that helped me as I was working through burnout, as I was becoming a life coach, as I was talking with my colleagues from residency or medical school, and the ideas and the thoughts that I came up with them, and actually getting it recorded for everybody else out there. And so when I wanted to start my podcast, I actually initially named it the Doctor's Lounge Podcast. Little did I know that was already taken. So plan B, I was going to name it Truth Prescriptions. Well, little did I know from that, that was already taken too. So third choice, I went back to Doctor Me First. And I love the words Doctor Me First because so many times as physicians, that's exactly what we needed to do. That's exactly what I need to do every single day. I need to take care of me and mine first before I go out and serve. Because for so long, I was giving away everything I had. All of my time, my love, my emotions, my energy, my intellectual property and thoughts. It was all being spilled out and I was keeping nothing left for myself. And I needed a way to give myself permission to say, no, Aaron, it's time. You're a physician. You need to physician yourself. So hence, doctor me first. And now I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's episode. It's a shout out of encouragement from Dr. Karina Hopin. You may recognize the name because she was actually a guest a few episodes back. But she wanted to particularly sponsor the Dr. Me First podcast and have me read this shout out of encouragement to you from Albert Schweitzer. At times, our own light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think of deep gratitude of those who have lit lit the flame within us. She goes on to say that the daily dose of Dr. Me First helps keep her and you inspired by the many female physicians who are harmonizing work and home life. I just want to thank Dr. Hopin so much for her sponsorship, for her shout out of encouragement and I also want to tell you all about a cool project that she's doing. She's in the process of creating an online course that will help individuals ignite their creative energies whether that be through art, writing, music, woodworking, even podcasting probably falls on that list. And this course is going to be available in late August, early September. And if you want to check out more on what 
Dr. Copen's doing with this amazing creative energy project, go check out our website at thrivingmamamd.com. Again, that's Thriving Mama MD with Dr. Karina Hopin. So I'm really excited that the book and the podcast have actually kind of mirrored each other. And because of that, I want to do a quick overview of the workbook, which is available to you, by the way, if you want it. It's on my website. But I want to do a quick overview, and it's not going to give you everything that's in the book because that would be way too long, and you know these solo casts are always like 20 minutes or less. But I just wanted to, to breeze through it and see if perhaps it's something that you would be interested in or at least take a few exercises away that you can do today. So the introductory chapter starts with me talking about my experience. Of course, it gives you an index to give you absolutely everything that you're going to get in it. But where it starts off is a question that I asked myself many times, and that is, am I depressed or burned out? I knew that I had like sat there and contemplated, you know, should I start an SSR on myself just to see if I would get better, even though I knew in the back of my mind I should not treat myself, which, you know, is a struggle for many of us. And so we all know that chronic stress can lead to depressive states and that just now finally, you know, the World Health Organization has um, recognized burnout, but we don't really have CPT code that can say burnout, but we do have one for major depressive disorder, you know, that old DSM-5 that we all pretty much love. But I don't know. I still struggle with that question. And I write about that in the book about, you know, did I do need a huge inventory like the Maslow survey? You know, I frequently did my own um, depression surveys as people were filling them out for my office. And I thought, man, my numbers are a lot worse. But, you know, what I think it comes back to is that it doesn't really matter. So I write a list out of different statements that I have each of you, whoever reads the book, to go through and look about it and then write some statements on what you feel strongly towards. So here are a few of them and see if they hit home to you. Because when I wrote this, this is exactly what I put in the notes. I feel like I have no more emotional energy to give my husband and children I come home. I'm empty and I don't know how to fill up. That's actually what I wrote. It's a total opposite of where I am now, but I'm just telling you, it's okay if that's your feeling. So here's the list that I wrote down to see if anything triggers in you. Emotional exhaustion, overwhelming fatigue, loss of motivation, cynical, sense of ineffectiveness, discouraged, dissatisfied, disengaged, frustrated, fearful, trapped, feelings of failure, anxious, worried, downhearted, deflated, hopeless, disappointed. If any of those hit home, you may start one of thinking about, yeah, you might have a little bit of crispiness with burnout, but that's okay because you're actually identifying it. You're becoming aware of it, and it doesn't mean that it has to be forever reality. The other exercise that I put in the introductory chapter is what I term the mindful CT scan. So when I was really crispy with burnout, I had a friend who invited me to yoga class. I had done a little bit in college in like an exercise therapy class, but I'd never actually really done yoga in a yoga studio, you know, with the gong and the incense and the whole experience. So it was something that was totally new to me. It was a break away from everything else, and I love the exercise component. But as the class would wear down and the sweat dripping off of my body was slowing down, the instructor would have us do a body scan as we were getting ready for shavasana or resting pose or corpse pose too. She had us get comfortable, close our eyes, start to notice our breathing, the position or the sensations in our body. And she would say things like deep, take a deep breath, filling your body, then exhale and relax more deeply or feel mother earth cradling your contact points or bring more attention to your breath. So me as the type A science nerd, I had a really hard time embracing my inner woo-woo at that point. But I did embrace the fact that I knew that mindfulness had been proven to reduce stress, improve well-being, decrease aches and pains, you know, all of that stuff. 
So in order for me to get through Shavasana without going crazy and actually get some mindfulness that I could relate to, I made up my own kind of exercise, hence where the mindful CT scan came from. So here's what I want you to do. Envision yourself laying on the CT scanner table, getting ready to go through the gantry. That's the big round circle thing. And instead of today getting your or gauge nuked and imaged, I want this scan to identify the hot spots in your body, like your feelings, your emotions, your issues. So you take a few minutes to relax, you think about laying on the CT, you think about that calm music that they always play and how it's like freezing cold. No, don't think about freezing cold, but you get it. Like really imagine it. And then start to think about those beams going through your body and sensing as you're going through the gantry and traveling down from head all the way to toes. You know, what does your emotional levels look like? What do your internal stru internal structures look like? Are they crispy with burnout? Is your heart atrophied because there's no love in your life? Are you feeling a little hopeless and anxious and your guts are tied in knots? Any organs also shrunken from underuse? Are there any that are hypertrophied because they've been so overused? What's your scan show? And here's the cool thing in this workbook. I actually make you write out your own radiology report. And here's one that I came up with at the time. This is a 33-year-old white female who appears to have utter brain mush from stress and exhaustion when I scan through her head. She seems to hold t tension in her trapezius bilaterally because they are extremely hypertrophied. IBS symptoms from anxiety and a fatigue Achilles from worn out shoes from running. So that's my example, and I hope that it works for you to notice things in your life so that maybe your shavasana can get a little bit easier. So that's the introductory chapter to Dr. Me First. It's the shortest one. The other chapters are actually much, much longer with a lot more exercises. Yeah, it's a little corny, I know, but if you hang out with me, you're going to get a little corny. So as we finish up this solo cast, I just want you all to know that I really am here for you. Give me a call. Set up an appointment. I would love to talk with you because really, I am your life coach. Let's be honest. All right. Well, as always, remember your life, your calling, your pulse matters. Bye.